My name is Evan Goldberg, and I'm one of the producers of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, as well as one of the writers. I'm James Weaver, one of the producers of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Ninja Turtles is something that me, James, Seth, like everyone who works on it has been obsessed with ever since we were kids. And it's just one of those properties we talked about forever. And uh, I actually can't remember. Did Nickelodeon yeah. bring it to us? Or Nick, did we pr- I don't no, even remember no, how Nick, we came to Nickelodeon this. called us and said, would you guys ever be interested in working on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, franchise? Which, of course, we were like, yes, we would. The thing that people have yet to really mine, we felt like for this franchise, at least in the, in the most recent versions, is like, this is a movie about teenagers and youth and what it is to be growing up. It is a little bit of a, it's just inherently a coming of age story, or at least has the ability to be that. And I think that was the thing that Seth and Evan sort of clicked in right away. We're like, well, how do you do it the way that we would do it and where can we bring to it? And I think it was... You know, I'm sure you'll hear this a lot, but like just focusing on that teenage word a little bit and really making sure that we like mine that for all the things that you can, um, as well as just like that just feels like something that we have a real interest and excitement to tell stories from that point of view. The look's important, but even more important is probably the voices. Yeah. That like the actors are actually teens, and that was something that all of us felt very strongly about from the get go. It was kind of like the guiding light for the whole project is like, Let's get real teens. Let's have them record together. Let's have them actually have real conversations. Because, like, most people don't understand that animated films, like, well, they'll have someone come in and then someone come in four months later and they're having a conversation in the movie, but they've literally never met each other. And one of them's in London, one of them's in L.A. And, like, we got four real teens in a room and they were actually, like, some of the, some of the best moments in the whole movie, some of the biggest laughs are just the four of them riffing. The reason why we wanted Jeff Rowe so badly is because The Mitchells versus The Machines is a 10 out of 10 movie. It's just, like, unbelievable. The animation was so innovative and fun. It just, like, that movie, like, took us all by surprise. Like, we, we knew it was going to be good, but when we saw it, it just blew our minds, especially the animation. Like, he really did something that he'd just never seen. He, like, had fun with it. He didn't, like, uh, force himself to exist within, like, rules or try to make it look like our world. He was like, no, it's not. It's, it's different, and things go out of the lines, and things are a little uh, less perfect than most anim- animation always tries to be like so perfect and he just came at it with a new perspective it probably is worth saying that like one of the things that will always make the turtles what uh, for as long as we get to work on or anyone th- it makes it a a an idea and characters that people connect to is there is true clarity with each of them of like th- they are this kind of person and not you know as like seeing how the guys could write with that in mind what that's an incredible like jokes you know joke uh, skill um, opportunity to use it also like really allows us to like figure out how to emotionally connect but like i think that that's probably one of the real like core dna things about the about the ninja turtle franchise is like you know you know what kind of character in like one word each of these turtles is and that allowed us to like in terms of looking for like who can embody that in a modern way, in a way of like a 2023 movie. We really wanted at the core for it to be about these kids who just want to be accepted. They just want to do what normal kids do and go to high school. They want to have a, you know, listen to music in the halls and and be in the lunchroom and be in improv and be on the sports teams. They just want what every other kid has and they can't have it. And everything is around that. Every single part of the film is just like the relationship with Splinter revolves around that too he wants to protect them but they just want to do what all the other kids do and so you know even though we end up fighting a a 70 story monster it's just about being accepted and trying to be normal kids who get to do what normal kids get to do and i think the and i think in the having a mirror of that in the villain plot and the sort of the villain emotional story of like well watch like watching what going for acceptance might be what, what what that might look like if you go too far I think was one of the things the guys cracked from a storytelling standpoint of like you know being accepted is a very classic teenage sort of emotional um, thing that you're dealing with and then how do you play that out against your the villain that you're trying to fight and I think one of the things that um, that Jeff and Seth and Evan sort of came up with was like well what if the person that they're fighting is also trying to be accepted they're just going about it from a different a completely different sort of way and then how that might actually throw your sort of whole idea of like who i am who I, who I am off i think the reason why the turtles just keep working decade after decade after decade is very simple it's just it's you and your buddies 
It's you and your brothers. It's you and your sister and your brother. Like, it just seems like people you know, and you can easily be one of them. Like, anyone is one of these guys, pretty much. There's not, like, a goth one. I guess if they had a goth one, everyone could identify with something. But almost everyone can identify with one of these guys. And just, like, especially in our version where we have these actual teenagers improv together, like, it truly is, like, identical to moments I experienced in high school. And I think, yeah, it's just that. That, like, everyone can see themselves, but even more importantly, you can see your friends or siblings and you in that. Seth and I are just obsessed with Jackie Chan. We've been watching Jackie Chan movies since Rumble in the Bronx came out, which introduced us to, to him pretty much. We've just been obsessed. We think that he has the greatest comedic timing of anyone, maybe like Buster Keaton and him and Charlie Chaplin. Uh, he just like figured out a way to make things visually hysterical and thrilling. And that is like a very, very unique thing that he has mastered well beyond anybody. And considering this is like an animated martial arts comedy it just like couldn't have been more perfect to have him in the role and we didn't actually think of him right away because it just didn't even seem like possible it didn't seem like possible. how like what and then i think we were like but there's one person who would obviously be like the biggest coolest idea but they'll never do it and then we made the call and it was like he'd like to look at the script and consider doing it and i think we all were sort of freaking out like oh and then it was like how are we gonna blow this like we were certain like oh we'll say something or there'll be some joke that we pitch and he'll be like oh i never want to talk to you again <laughs> and please go away and then all of a sudden it was like he signed we're doing a record and the records were always always super early in the morning so kudos especially to seth and jeff who ran those mostly but like they would be up like at like 5 a.m and they're riffing with Jackie Chan and he's doing their, you know, the lines that are written, the like, he was coming up with like funny ideas. Yeah, and he was like a dream. Like, he's like, do you have what you need? Do you want me to do it again? When he came in, we were all very excited, of course. Uh, and, and me and Seth and James have met him before. Um, so our initial starstruckness was, was not there. We were just ready to rock. And we were like, let's do this thing. <laughs> but you forget that he is like a master of words. Like he is a rapper. He, this is what he does. And like, he just went like, zero to 60 stayed at 60 the whole time like bam 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 and he'd be like i got an idea i got an idea i got an idea let's do it again like i've never seen someone take less breaks and deliver more faster like he delivered like if, if you know how much time he recorded in total for how much he's in the film it's astounding yeah like he just nailed like most of his lines he got on the first try which is just never the case we went through a lot of ideas for who april could be i think that um Jeff very early on had a very strong take on the design of the character like he wanted he really wanted um, he really had some interesting thoughts about like how April should should sort of be uh, you know should be in the movie Io had was able to do both this dramatic sort of has is an incredible actor but she's really funny I mean she's just a genuine comedian so um, when she came in and read it was clearly like it was so obvious it was her I think people can expect an awesome teenage comedy at the center of it all, and then you just layer a bunch of ninja action on top of that, and mutants. Those three things. I think we made a, as funny a movie as we've ever made that also has like an incredibly great action uh, element to it. Um, and I'm just excited I can show my child a movie I've made finally. So frankly, this is all for my son.